Welcome back to part two of uh, Rebuild and recommissioning of the Honda CB400 4 Super Sport. Um, from the last video, as you can see, we completely like, we pretty much stripped the bike down and um, gave it a good service and blew all the um, paint chunks out of the, uh, out of the fuel tank. Um, we then reassembled the bike and everything back together and um, we then found it actually have to be like a fuel leak um, on the carburetors on the seals around the float bulbs. So in this video, what we're going to do, we're going to completely take the carburetors out We've actually ordered a um, carb kit, kit online with new jets and new seals. So what we are going to do now in this video is completely strip these carbs down, have a good look at them, completely clean them all, get rid of any old fuel, any old oil that may be in them, and all the old seals. And then what we're going to do, we're going to put new seals and new jets in. And then hopefully, this will be a nice little good one then. So, let's get cracking. Okay, so the first step we're going to carry out is removing this battery, and then we're going to remove the air filter and then the air box from the system. Uh, then what we're going to do, we're going to disconnect the air intake manifold from the carbs and then see where we are and then find out where the leak is in this carb right? There's spot welder and tack welders, there's metal frames on it where they basically mounted every single electrical component that they've had on this bike onto the airbox. The amount of framework it is it would be impossible to actually take this out through the frame or actually having to remove the back wheel. Um, so obviously back wheel is all is all working fine, so there's no point in us actually disturbing that just to get out an airbox. So what we've done, we've disconnected the airbox from the air, air inlet manifold. So we've given ourselves enough room to actually be able to remove the car from the engine block. Um, so then we'll put all that back together once this is all up and running and we're happy with it. After a bit of a fight, we finally managed to get the carburetors off. So now, in the next step, we're going to go inspect them, find out where this leak's coming from. Very simple piece of equipment. Hi, you guys, welcome back. Shed Man 101 here, back with our recommissioning of our Honda CB404 Super Sport. Um, as you see, so we'll start off. Um, a little recap we've done in a previous video. Um, that's what we've done. We, uh, we shipped the carbs off the bike. Uh, just quickly, just to see, you know, uh, the condition of them. Um, obviously, we saw that the seals had gone in them, um, as well as other things as well. Um, so what we've done, we've uh, we've ordered a whole new uh, carburetor uh, reconditioning kit for it. Um, so the reason why we haven't uploaded in so long, so I apologise for now, is it's taken quite a while for the parts to come. Because uh, it's not just quite like a some parts you can just buy off the street. The parts we had to order had to come all the way from Taiwan, which is why it's been so long. So my apologies for that. Okay, so luckily now the parts have arrived, um, and we're going to start reconditioning. So it's a full kit, it's a full reconditioning kit for it. So we're going to open it up and just show you the contents of it. Okay, so as you can see, we'll open these up. It's got full kits. We've got brand new oil seals, brand new jets, brand new springs. Basically, the whole whole shebang to recondition the whole carburetor to hopefully get the bike running a lot more smoother. With a bit of fine tuning. So, we've got all of our parts laid out here. We've got every single piece for each carb. 
as well as also notice as well, which is pretty good from the uh, from the sellers that they've actually given us spare oil seals. So that's really good. That will really help us out in the future if there is any if any of the oil seals um, happen to fail in the future. Right, okay, guys. So before we can put um, the new seals and everything back in it, we first of all need to get rid of the old ones. So let's get cracking. Okay, just a little close up then we'll do quickly of the old seals. Let's see if we can get it to focus on there. Uh, as you can see, they're very worn, pretty much squished. So it was not providing any seal whatsoever. So, get rid of them. Okay guys, that's the bottom part of the carbs stripped and all the components taken out. Now it's time to fit the new parts. Alright, so we've taken out everything else. Uh, we've got just got the main jets we need to get out, which is a bit of a bugger, but we have a specialist tool, which is okay if you're going to use, if you're taking out old jets, but the new ones you don't quite want to use on these. It's a thread puller. It's quite good at gripping the old jets and getting them out. So they are a bit of a bugger. So, a bit of fiddling. Get them out. Hey. There we go. So that's it. Get that to focus. There we go. It's one of the old jets. And then we'll compare that to the new one. Which is nice and shiny. That's what we like to see. Now 
and now we're going to fit all the new, new components. I'm just going to give you a little, uh, little brief on how these work, what these call, we call float valves. Okay, how it works, work in conjunction with your floats and your carbs. What will happen is that as your um, carburetor bowl fills up with fuel, these will float to the top and then you have a little spring that's inside your float which will then push against your float valve and will stop any more fuel coming in. So obviously how much, uh, with how much the fuel is being demanded from the bike, these will constantly f open and close, we'll sort of float up and, then, and sink back down and that will regulate the amount of fuel that goes into the, um, into the carburetor float um, bowls. So now we're going to move on to the float bowls and we're going to change the seals as well on these. So, like I said, showed you before with the old ones, um, not pretty much Paris, much on their last leg, so that's why that's why we had fuel leak um, on the bike when we first started it up. So we're going to put some new ones in. Oh, I'll show you the spare pack that we got, which is some nice new seals, which we love, absolutely love them. So hopefully, after we fit them to these, that will then hopefully sort of pop them. Okay, so when you're putting in new seals as well, um, it can be a bit of a hard one to see into the actual component itself. So if you have a bit of silicone grease, which is really good for sticking together, you don't want to use um, any other different greases that could potentially damage the seal or start corroding or affect um, you know, the, the um, economy of the fuel system. So by using silicone grease, it's like a natural um, grease that's non-corrosive and it won't damage any of our parts.
Ah, uh, oh, petroleum is a really good one. Very pretty. Right, okay guys, so now we've reconditioned our carburetor, it's just a case now of putting all of our components back together and then retesting the bike to see if she'll start. Um, part of the video we have heated up these because where the bike's been sitting in the cold and we're trying to make her uh, rubber, rubber a bit more durable, so it's less susceptible to splitting when we try to get the carb, carbs back on. Okay, so first things first, it's carbs back in. That's pretty good. That's a result there. Yeah. So it's just a case now of just tightening up the clamps and then getting all the air filter body back on and air manifold. Put the throttle cables back on. So that's the air filter back in, I'm just going to get the cover on it and then get the battery back on. Ok 
Okay guys, so we nearly finished hooking up the fuel lines up, ready to go back onto the fuel tank. What we've done, we've, we've put a temporary filter in, uh, basically just to catch any part, because in case we're not fully confident that everything's been removed from the fuel tank, we should be able to catch the last little bits. That stuff us from blocking up our brand new jets we put in, because that would be a bit of a pain in the ass if we have to uh, take the carb back out again, just from blocking. So, I'll put a net in there, so hopefully stop us stop getting blocked up if you think wants to pass through the fuel system. So that's the fuel line connected. I'm now going to open it up and just check for any leaks. Oh, that's a lot of shit will come out of that one. Right, so we have fuel going through it. This is actually quite a good reason why I put a filter on the fuel system. There's quite a bit of rust coming through into that filter. So, I was quite lucky really. It's going to potentially block up the jets. Right, okay guys, so we finished um, reconditioning the cars and we fit the cars back onto the bike. There's only one more thing left to do now, which is to see if she will then start up. So I'm feeling pretty confident in the work that we've carried out, so there's only one way to see if uh, the work and shit's proved off. Right, so looks like uh, looks like oh, there's um, the bike seems to be running quite fairly well. There's a few little bits that we'll do on it. Let's give it a once over. Check all the valve uh, tappets, uh, space between all the tappets, and give it all the once over before we start putting the bike back together. But apart from that, it's a really good day actually. I'm um, really proud of what we've, what we've got, got achieved. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you for watching our video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Once again, Shedman 101. Peace out.